with our user data being validated on the back end, it's now time to store this data inside of a database so users can later authenticate against it. When connecting to a database, it's important to note we're actually connecting to a third-party program that's independent from our app. Programs like MySQL, MongoDB, and Postgres, these are all database programs that live separately from the app we are creating, yet our app can still connect to them and utilize all of their nice data storage features. As a result, we're going to be installing MySQL directly to our computers to do just that. The easiest way to install MySQL is to use a program called MAMP. MAMP is a program that creates a usable MySQL server with a simple click of a button. MAMP is available on both Windows and Mac, so head on over to MAMP.info to download and install the program. Once you've installed MAMP, open it up and hit the Start Servers button. This will spin up a usable MySQL server which we can use to create a database that we can connect our app to. With MAMP running, we now have access to phpMyAdmin, a database management program we can use to create our database. We can access phpMyAdmin by visiting localhost 8888 slash phpMyAdmin in a browser window. Once there, we want to click on New on the left-hand side of the screen, which essentially stands for New Database. Over here, we'll enter the name of our database we want to create, and this can be anything, but to keep things consistent with the name of our app, we're going to call this node-authentication. Hit the Create button, and we now have an actual MySQL database that we can connect our app to. With our MySQL database running locally, it's time to create that app to database connection. To connect to a MySQL database using Node, we're going to want to use some sort of NPM module that not only sets up a connection, but also lets us query the database in a clean and readable manner. The NPM module we're going to use for this is called SQLize. SQLize is an ORM, which stands for Object Relational Mapper. In plain speak, an ORM is a library that makes random queries and setting up database relationships as easy as humanly possible. SQLize abstracts standard MySQL queries, meaning we don't have to write any raw SQL. Instead, we can fetch data using clearly defined functions such as find one or find all. To make use of SQLize, we need to install two separate NPM modules, SQLize and MySQL2. SQLize provides us with the query functions we'll want to use to pull user data, while MySQL2 is what creates the actual app to database connection when used in conjunction with SQLize. To install these packages, run npm install dash dash save dash exact SQLize at 5.18.1 space MySQL2 at 1.7.0. We'll also want to install another NPM module, SQLize CLI. SQLize CLI is an add-on package for SQLize that'll allow us to generate some helpful files for SQLize in a quick and efficient manner. It also provides nice features such as database migrations and model generation, two topics we'll discuss as we progress through this course. To install SQLize CLI, we'll want to run npm install dash dash save dash exact dash dash save dash dev sqlize dash cli at 5.5.1 The first thing we're going to do is generate a number of directories and files that'll provide structure for our database connection and other useful features that sqlize provides. To do this, cd into the app server directory since that's where our backend code is located. Then run the sqlize cli command npx sqlize init. You'll notice four directories have been created for us. Config, Migrations, Models, and Cedars. All of these have their own individual purpose and eventually we'll get to each, but for now, let's just focus on getting our app connected to the database. Typically, when we're performing app-related functions in Terminal, we'll want to be located right within our project's root directory, rather than something like server. However, if we're running a SQLI CLI command from this root directory, you'll notice we receive an error. Cannot find config.json, have you run SQLize init? 
We most definitely ran SQL as init, but we ran it within our server directory rather than our project root. As a result, SQLize is unable to find its config file, a file that contains all the credentials required to actually connect to our database. If we want to run SQLize commands from our root directory, it might make sense to run SQLize init within our project root, but since we want to keep our backend and frontend code separated for organizational purposes, it makes more sense to keep our SQLize configuration inside of the server directory instead. So to get SQLize CLI to look inside our server directory when running these commands, we want to create what's known as a SQLize RC file, something that's used for setting global options related to SQLize CLI. To save some time, we'll grab a SQLize RC code snippet located in this episode's description on chriscourses.com, then paste it into our SQLize RC file. All this code does is tell SQLize CLI where our SQLize related folders are, all inside of our server directory. Now when we try running a SQLize CLI command, we're returned with a different error, access denied for user root at localhost. So we fixed our first issue and got SQLize referencing the config inside of our server directory, but now it's having trouble connecting to our actual database. If we look inside of config.json, you may notice that the default credentials set for development don't necessarily match up with our credentials required to connect to our database. Let's fix this. Looking at username, root is actually correct. This is the default username required to connect to our MySQL instance. Our password should not be equal to null, but root. This is another default given to us through MAMP and MySQL. The database property should be set to the name of the database we created with PHP my admin. So we're going to set this equal to node-authentication. And almost everything else is correct. Everything but the operator aliases property. Weirdly, even though operator aliases are deprecated in SQLize version 5, the SQLize CLI scaffolded the property into this file anyways. To fix this, all we need to do is delete the property altogether so we don't receive an annoying deprecation warning error each time we try to run a SQLize command. So now when we run SQLize CLI, no errors appear which means our configuration for connecting to a database is set up correctly. We can now utilize SQLize to write our app as needed to perform helpful functions such as creating database migrations, generating models, and also running queries in a clean and readable manner. Before we get there though, I want to make sure that we're implementing best practices for security so the likelihood your app gets compromised is kept to an absolute minimum. Looking inside of our config.json file, there is an issue. We're storing our app's database credentials inside of a file that's meant to be stored inside of version control. If we were to push this file up to a public repo on GitHub or some other Git service, anyone who comes across our repo would be able to see the username and password required to log into our database. This may not be much of an issue for us at the moment since we're running our database locally with default credentials, but when we start updating our credentials for things like staging and production, this can present a huge issue. Imagine if the whole world had access to thousands of emails and passwords belonging to the numerous users who've created an account through your website. This is an issue not only for every user who signed up using your app, but also for yourself, as you can land yourself in big legal trouble for allowing something like this to occur. As a result, before creating any database table with SQLabs, we're going to ensure these database credentials are hidden and not pushed up to version control. To ensure the credentials inside of the config.json file cannot be read, we're going to be using what's known as a .env file. A .env file is a file where we can store data not meant for the public eye. Any data related to database connections, API keys, or anything else you don't want the world to see should go inside of this file. By installing a package called .env, we could pull data from this .env file and use it elsewhere in our app without actually revealing any credentials to the world. So let's start by installing the .env package with npm install dash dash save dash exact .env at 8.1.0 and then create a .env file located within our project's root. And inside of this, we're going to list out four keys that'll store our database's sensitive information. DB host, DB user, DB password, and DB name. We're then going to set these equal to the database credentials that we set inside of config.json. So for DB host, we'll put 127.0.0.1 which is basically localhost, 
root db user will put root. The password for our root user is also root. And our database name is node-authentication. With our credentials assigned to their corresponding keys, we'll want to import these keys into our config file without actually displaying their values. To do this, we need to use nodes require statement, something that can only be done inside of a JavaScript file. As a result, we'll want to change .json to .js. And once we do this, we can load our .env file with require .env dot config, and then we're going to call this as a function. Once that's in place, we're going to replace the JSON code with the same code, but in JavaScript format. And to do this, we're going to grab the config.js snippet inside of the video's description and paste it in. Now, when we run a SQLize command, we receive the same error we faced previously, cannot find config.json. Well, since we changed our JSON file to a JavaScript file, we need to specify that we did that within our SQLize RC. So head on over to sqlize.rc. We'll say that we're no longer using a .json file, but rather a .js file. We'll save things, run another sqlize command, and now we have no issues. Now it's important to note, this .env file should never be pushed up to a remote Git repo. You need to make sure that this .env file is listed within your .gitignore to make sure that Git doesn't store it inside of its tracking system. Thankfully, Nuxt creates a gitignore with env listed by default, so we don't need to worry about any potential issues there. To summarize, displaying credentials in plain text can cause some serious issues, so we created a non-git trackable env file, which keeps our credentials hidden when loading them inside of our config. The next step for us is to create database migrations, git trackable files that create tables inside of our database. We'll be doing just that in the next episode, so I'll see you there right now.